Hey guys, welcome to this video. For those of you who don't know, I actually do one-on-ones with other agency owners and coaches uh, to try and help them scale by implementing the exact systems that I've built out in my own agency, Decentrasite, where we kind of do on and off about 80K a month in revenue uh, consistently. And so what you're about to see is actually a leaked coaching call um, with a guy named Carlos. Um, and he's had about two calls with me and in the beginning, he pretty much started off with the typical problem where he wasn't able to book uh, consistent meetings. And that's actually one of the easiest problems to solve when you kind of have your agency systems dialed in. And so we kind of helped him with that. And uh, then he got to the next problem, which is, okay, he's got all these uh, calls coming in consistently. Now he really wants some help to try and like uh, consistently close them. And so I basically said, look, let's just do a sales call um, where I'll be the client and you try and sell me because I've probably been on like 200 sales calls at this point. And so if you can sell me, you can pretty much sell anyone because I know like the hardest objections to throw and I am going to throw them to you uh, to make it difficult. And we started doing that. And like within the first five minutes, I basically stopped him and I said, this sales call is going horribly wrong. And so how about let me just break apart my thought process, my structure and how this sales call should go. And I truly believe like if you're an agency or a coach or consultant, if you just sell services through sales calls, this will fundamentally help you. Like if you watch this to the end and you kind of take down all the golden nuggets, it will fundamentally help you close like 80% more sales calls because I wish I had a video exactly like this when I started. Um, so I hope you enjoy. If you do want to book a completely free uh, call with me and we can just see if we're a good fit, plus I can give you some advice and walk you through the processes as I did in this call. Uh, the first link in the description will be a link to my calendar. But otherwise, I hope you enjoy. Let me know if you have questions or thoughts in the comments and good luck scaling your agency. Cool. So let's make up a brand, right? And then you're going to try yeah. and sell me. So if you can sell me, you're good at sales calls. Um, okay. So let's make up a brand. So... I am an e-commerce company. Uh, the name of my company is uh, Tag, and I sell luxury watches. Um, I basically, let's make this fair to you because Tag wouldn't really be on a sales call. So I basically try to sell luxury watches or watches that look luxury, but at a cheaper price, right? So you get lots of the watch brands that are, like our average order value is probably 100 to $200. Um, we're selling those type of watches, but they look really, really nice. Um, we have run Facebook ads before and uh, we haven't really got results, but that's why we're talking to you. So we're going to start the sales call and you're going to start the call and I'm going to pretend to be the client. My name's Courtney. The name of the brand is Watch. And uh, you ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. All right, uh, Courtney, how are you doing? Good. Good, thanks. And you? It's a good day, busy day, but good. Yeah. Um, where are you from, by the way? Switzerland. Uh, um, in Zurich, actually, yeah. Ah, cool, cool. Uh, how's the weather over there? Freezing cold, and I hate the cold. Uh, I, I'm I'm actually here in Cape Town right now, so I'm pretty lucky <laughs> to have a good weather. Um, I've heard a lot of good things. Yeah, yeah, I've heard a lot of good things uh, of Zurich too. I've actually been there one time. Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um. Yeah, just to kind of get to the business side of things, um, I would like to just give you somewhat of a clarity how this um, call will go. And first of all, I would like to um, kind of show you how we actually work at my agency and then somewhat ask you a few questions um, about your business just to see if we would be a good fit. Okay. okay Don't good. do that. You, um, don't do that? Don't do that. Okay. Don't jump. So you always show how your agency works at the end, right? Yeah. Because I'm not buying how your agency works. Like I don't care about your systems and your processes. The only thing that is going to make me pull out my credit card is if you can get me to your goals, right? So what you need to do, plain and simple, is that people complicate sales. It's not complicated. What you need to do is figure out where I am now. So you need to always start to ask me some questions like, what do I sell? Who do I sell to? How is the business going? Do I have some form of marketing strategy at the moment? What is working? What's not? Like, why am I on this call? So just first of all, figure out why I am now. And a mm -hmm. secret little hack that I would always give to people on sales is if in the first two minutes you are doing a lot of talking, your sales call is going completely wrong. So you basically ask me where I am and whatever, and then you were about to start talking a long time. 
um, about your agency stuff. That's like a huge red flag. I must do all the talking, which is you must just ask me questions. And I must talk. Okay. So really, that's how a sales call go. You figure out wh where I am now. Okay. I do a lot of the talking. Then you figure out where I want to be. Okay. And again, I must do a lot of the talking. And um, what you really want to do is you want to look for anchors. Okay. Because you want to really sales is this is where I am. This is where I want to be. And you need to build a bridge. So you want to look for points that you can connect. And that's what, you, when you're taking notes down, that's what you're taking down. So for example, you want to ask me how much revenue is the business doing at the moment? Say 50K. And you ask me how much do I want to be doing? So when, when, when you get to the part where you ask me about my goals, you ask me how much do I want to be? And I say, I want to do 150K. Okay. So again, you take down all those notes and you take down those notes. And then what you do is you look at the difference. So in this example, I'm currently doing 50 and I want to do 150. So I need to increase my revenue by 100K in order to, to hit my goal. So then what you need to do is you need to say, right, based on what you've told me, um, it's pretty obvious that we need to increase your sales by um, 100K to hit your goal of 150K. And what you need to be doing, it's extremely important that you repeat back what I told you. That's how you know that you're doing a good sales call. And it really, really hits home with the prospect because it makes me feel like you listen to me. So you need to say, I remember from what you just said that you were doing 50K. Now you want to do 150K. Repeat the numbers that I gave you. There's a difference there of 100K. So now what I want to do is I just want to tell you how my agency can be the vehicle that moves that needle, gets you that 100K. Would you like me to tell you um, how we can do that? Then when I say yes, then what you need to do is say, okay, usually you can say, I'm going to make you that extra 100K by doing three things, okay? And those three things can be different, right? That could be I'm going to optimize your funnel. I'm going to write you amazing ad copy. And then I'm going to run that ad copy with the best performance marketers in the world and get generate results. Then I'm going to be like, wow, that sounds amazing, but it sounds too good to be true. And then you say, okay, let me show you how we do it. And then you show me what it's like to be a client at the agency. You show me your processes and whatever. And then what you do is you, you, you keep silent. Completely. Don't say anything and wait for me to ask the price. Because like, if you're keeping quiet and you've already spoken about everything, eventually I'm going to be like, this sounds good. How much is it going to cost? Then yeah. you, you, say the, you say the price and again, you keep dead quiet. And then honestly, it's just objection handling. Um, and then based on the response there, that is when you decide if you go for a one call close or a two call. If I'm pushing extremely hard objections, do not try and call me in a one, do not try and close me in a one call it's too much pressure for you and it's not going to work, right? I'd rather go too cool. But if my objections are very weak, like my objections is like, mm, I don't know if it's a good time to start now because, you know, it's the end of the month. Shouldn't we wait until next month? Like if it's very, very weak objections, push for the one call close. But if I hit you very hard with like, show me five examples of other brands that you've done this for in my niche, um, et cetera, like it's a hard objection. Then rather say, answer the objection, but ease the pressure off, rather push to like a follow-up call and, and let me marinate on it a bit. That is how we handle sales calls. Um, because it sounds really good because um, actually be, um, the one objection, the one guy gave me, I think he was from India. He said, all right, let's wait until next month because then we are going to launch a new product. And I think that's just going to be overall better. And then he also said, um, the price is too much. Would it be possible to pay you just 500 um, at the beginning and 500 when the job is done? And I was kind of just overwhelmed with it. And yeah. Okay. Well, the good news is eventually you'll get... So I like comparing sales calls to gym, right? It's one of those things where you just have to spend time doing reps, right? Then you'll get better mm -hmm. at it. And so eventually you'll get so good at handling objections. You don't need a plan. I don't, I don't walk into sales calls with a plan. I just make it up as I go. And usually it works out very well. But in your case, especially if you're saying like things like it's too much for you, just fire up Notion, Evernote, whatever you want to use and just keep a list of objections and a list of answers. And then you just study that until it becomes natural. So like if you hit me with the objection that I want to start next month, I'm going to say, why? Why do you want to start next month? Okay, so, so do the roll call with me. Why do you want to start next month? Um, so I, I'm I'm the client. I'm the potential client, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want to start next month because next month the new product is going to launch and we really believe in this product. 
So we want to start advertising with you once the new product that we actually believe in is launching. Makes sense. And um, I actually looked at your new product and I, I agree, it's an improvement, it's amazing. But here's the thing why we're not going to do that. Because first of all, you don't want to start marketing when you want sales because there's a delay. So for example, if your product's coming out in two weeks time, I need to start prospecting now because people don't buy products instantaneously, right? They've got to come to the, pro the, the product page and they've got to be retargeted. Then they've got to come back. On average, these are not my stats, Facebook, Google stats, confirm to Google it if you want. On average, people take like three or four hits on a site before they convert. So I need three or four hits and that doesn't happen in the same day. So really, if I start marketing now, you are only going to see sales in two weeks time. And so that's why, first of all, we need to be filling the pipeline so that when your product goes live, we can sell when it goes live and there isn't this huge delay. Okay, that's the first thing. And second thing, doesn't it make sense to sell your existing product in the meantime? Like you basically are sacrificing potential gains in revenue for a new product that might do better based on our assumption, but it might not. What about your existing product? Like you've proven you can sell it in the past. So let's keep selling it. Let's keep making money so that if this product doesn't work, at least you've made money. And you're a business owner like me, Business is about minimizing risk. So doesn't that make sense? Um, yes, it makes sense. I, but I somewhat will have to talk about it with my team. That's what, what you speak to them about. Um, just like because we, uh, like my, my wife is my business partner and we just always do the decisions together. So, <laughs> yeah. Listen, I can tell you there's been some weird calls with clients where um, I've literally told them, can you, can you pick up your phone and, and get your wife on speakerphone so I can speak to her because I can see that's how the needle's going to move. But here's the thing. Um, I also have a wife and um, I understand that if you make decisions, you didn't kind of put it past them, it's a bit of a tricky situation. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a three, five day, uh, no questions asked uh, refund policy. So we can onboard now, sign now um, and go and speak to your wife. Please have the conversation with her. Let's start the process of onboarding. And um, if your wife is like 100% against it, All I, all I would ask for you is that we could just jump in a call and I can understand why. Um, and if she still is 100% against it and you back her, I'll refund you instantaneously. But let's get the ball going so that when you go to your wife with this, you can also show her progress. Um, how does that sound? Sounds good. Sounds good. easy. Um, what do you think about um, if they, like, if you have like the second sales call and you're not closing on the call, like the client is, uh, the potential client is not paying on the call. Do you really think like it's like 70 to 90% that he is not going to pay in the future? No, it depends on, first of all, a client never does not pay. So the, the fact that they're not paying is not the problem. The problem is why they're not paying. So what you need to understand is there's a couple of reasons why people don't buy, right? The first one is logistical reasons. Like, Sometimes the client might not have any stock. If they don't have any stock, you can't market now. That's like a hardcore logistical reason. Nothing you can do except set a, a follow-up call for when they have inventory, right? So logistical reasons might also be they don't understand like your processes, things like that. And a lot of times when I've seen other agency owners explain their processes, they basically just talk, right? Which is a huge mess. Um, what I do is I literally just choose a random client. And, and usually in my head, I know which clients are like similar to them and also doing well. And um, I just show them that client. And I say, this is client X. This is what, um, when, when they log in to our project management software, this is what it looks like. So imagine if you were them. And that's how I explain the process. So that's the logical one. The other one is uh, the emotional one. And that's because you did what you tried to do with me. You tried to sell me on your processes. And I don't buy processes. I don't care about your processes. You have to sell me on my goals, right? So that's because you didn't frame it in a sense that you can take me from where I am to where I want to be. And if that's the case, you need to have a personal conversation. So you need to say, look, this is our second follow-up call. Um, I think it makes sense logistically and practically, but I can see that you're not seeing how I can actually get you to where you want to be. So maybe that's my fault because I didn't understand. Where do you want to be in six months, right? And have that conversation. The third reason why people don't buy is um, because they don't trust you. And if they don't trust you, um, it's very important that you have some, some channels uh, going aside a sales call. So like, for example... Uh, you can do this in Calendly now. We have it set up in um, an email software, but I believe you can do it in Calendly. But the moment someone books a call, you need to have an automatic email sequence go out to them, a couple case studies before they join the call. So by the time they get on the discovery call, they must already see case studies and things. 
um, so that they trust you. Because if people don't trust you, it's because, first of all, you haven't shown them case studies or results. Secondly, maybe your agency doesn't look like a proper brand. Or third, you're just not projecting that you know what you're talking about, right? Like I believe, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think when I get on sales calls, I think I project very much that I know what I'm talking about and I frame myself like the expert and I've done this 5,000 times, right? And I think clients can sense that type of thing. Okay, so that's the other issue. The fourth issue is you just haven't made the offer a no-brainer, right? And that's why like in your case with um, he had to go speak to his wife, I made it a no-brainer for him because I gave him absolutely nothing to lose. If he speaks to his wife and his wife doesn't like me or doesn't want to do it or whatever, well then 100% refund, right? Um, so he can go to his wife and say, I found this amazing company. This is what they do. This is why I signed them. This is their process because we're already getting onboarded. So this is how it looks. Do you like them? And he has this whole thing where he can go to her and he can say, look what I did. And if she completely whacks it down, he can at least say, okay, no problem. I'm just going to get a refund. I made it an offer that he can't resist. So you need to understand why they're not buying. And then you need to answer those things. And also you need to, you need to look at things within context. Like if it's a, if it's like a one man e-com company, the ad spends like two to three K, you do not need three sales calls, but we have like one client. I've had four sales calls with it. The reason for that, their ad spend is 120 K a month. Okay. And so there's a, a big company there. And so it's not just like, let's just, you know, get on a one call. He's got investors, he's got a board. Like there's a plan. You can't just, you know, roll in there and be like, let's sign the contract now to get what I'm saying. So you yeah. also have to look at context a little bit. Like if it's a big company, they're not going to move into one call. So, <clears throat> but let's, let, let's keep going with the sales call, dude. Restart, restart. Right, right, right. Um, okay, okay. So my question to you right now would be why, like, why did you take out, um, Why did you specifically book this call right now? Like you saw me as an agency owner, like why did you go on my website, on my Calendly link and exactly book this call? The, to be honest with you, I'm interviewing a couple different agencies. Um, I tried to run ads myself and um, I wasn't able to get results at all. So um, I tried to run ads myself, just wasn't able to get results. You seem like a good option. I do have a couple other options though. So I'm just interviewing and, and seeing my options. Ah, got it, got it. So you have done Facebook ads in the past, right? Yeah, I have, I've run them myself. I'm not very good at it, but I've tried. And how much is your business currently lo doing in revenue? I do about 50K a month. About 50K and with ads, with some Google ads, or is it just a CEO and organic traffic? This year, we do a little bit of email marketing. We are spending money on ads, but it's not really making sales. Okay, okay. And to just get uh, a sort of perspective, what is your goal if we, if we decide to work together and starting these Facebook ads? What is your goal um, looking into the future, let's say six to 12 months, um, your well, revenue goal? Well, first of all, I don't want to ever look at Facebook ads again. Um, I don't want to log into business manager. I don't want to get involved with that. Um, I just want consistency as well. Like um, I have done, like I said, I, I, we've launched some ads and we've even done like some influencer thing and it works, but it's like one day we make a lot of sales and then the next couple of days we make nothing. So I just want consistency and honestly just someone to handle it so that I can focus on other areas of the business. Got it, got it, got it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, I can tell you. I can tell you another thing, dude. Yeah, of course. Um, I want to show you something. It's kind of like my little uh, secret hack here. Um, but the fact that like you're taking down these numbers, and I can vis visually see that you're not taking notes, and also mm -hmm. you're not reframing them back to me, I think is going to hurt your. Um, it's going to hurt your conversion numbers. So, um, I want to show you what I show the client <clears throat> when I'm on a sales call. Um, maybe send this to you afterwards as well um but uh so i have this uh i have this sheet and basically what i do is um i, I kind of go through my emotional part right that's one thing you missed you didn't ask me about my personal aspirations you asked me about my business aspirations remember the business is is just 
a vehicle that a person owns. First, you have to figure out what my personal desires are. And remember, I'm a, I'm a human. I'm buying off what I want, not really what my business wants, right? And so you went straight into business revenue and projected business revenue. You never do that. And also don't ask where I am now and where I want to be. Don't ask me at the same time. Break it into asking me a lot of questions and then ask me a lot of where I want to be, right? So break it down. And a sheet like this helps because basically what I do is I, I first do the emotional stuff. I say, hey, um, before I get into this, I want to just figure out how I should speak to you on this call. Like, do you have some Facebook ad knowledge or like, do I need to make it as simple as possible? Because that's why you're hiring us. Right, that's my first thing that I do. Because if someone is a Facebook ad like knowledgeable person, you can't dumb the language down because you're going to look like a moron, right? So, but if it's someone who is not technical, you have to dumb it down. Otherwise, you're going to go so far above their head, you're going to lose them. Okay, so you understand the audience that you're selling to, right? So I ask them that. Then I ask them, let's say that they are a, a Facebook ad, they have some knowledge. I say, right, how many hours are you spending a day in Facebook Business Manager? They usually say two or three. I'm like. Isn't that boring? Like, don't you want to run spend that time with your family or something? And very often they'd be like, yeah, that's why I'm on this call. So I don't ask them why you're on this call because it's kind of like an answer that like, well, the main thing is I want to make more money. Most people get on these calls because they want to make more money. Like asking them why you're on this call, a little bit self-defeating. I really just do digging until I find the answer to the question. Okay. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, so I go through like a bunch of like emotional things first and I, and in that emotional thing, you build rapport. You have not made me smile once in the sales call. That's a, that's a problem, right? You got to make me smile. So this is when it's like personal things. I'm like, I start making some jokes and, you know, I build that connection. Yeah. Then what I do is I, I make a hard transition and I'm like, amazing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get super technical. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to run through the sheet that I made. And um, I'm really just going to ask you some, some hard questions on the numbers your business is doing, as well as some goals that you have. And I'm going to see if it's actually possible for us to get you there. And to be perfectly honest with you, uh, in your case, Courtney, um, if I cannot help you achieve these numbers that you want, I'm just going to end the sales call. Because I respect you. I like you after our conversation. I don't want to waste your time. Right? And then you take them through the sheet. And then as they were giving answers, you actually type it down, right? So I'm like, cool, what's your current monthly revenue? What is your target? And then what it does, simple calculations, is it's automatically just calculating the gap. And then I be like, okay, what's your AOV? Based on that, what's your LTV? Uh, what's your average upsell? And what I do is I look for problems here as well. Because if I get to a question and it's like, what's your average upsell? And they come with, I don't have one. Or what is that? Then I'm like, See, this is why this call is worth it for you because you cannot be a business owner without an upsell. So let me just give you $10,000 worth of advice for free on this call in the next two minutes. This is what an upsell is. This is how it works. This is why you need it. This is how we get amazing results with it, right? So you actually diagnose their business same time. Then you go through the whole sheet and eventually what you're going to end up is this. Customers needed. So how many customers do they need based on their results to achieve this? And then you ask them a very, very straight question. Do you think it's possible to find 22 customers in a month? Um, and they're going to be like, yeah. I'm like, I agree. Do you want me to show you what that's going to look like? And then they'll say, yeah. Then you go into, okay, this is the systems and the process and whatever the story is, right? So um, yeah. easy, a lot easier than uh, just doing it over like a, a visual thing like this. Mm -hmm. Do you have sort of a script? I make it up as I go at the moment. <laughs> Um, I've done so many of these things, I make it up, but I am going to be uh, recording. I know I keep saying it, I've just been so busy with the new house, but I am going to be properly writing a Google Sheet. And then what I'm going to do is I have a couple of call recordings from the agency where I've just gone through the script in my own head. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the script in a doc, record a loom explaining it, and then also just post like three or four sales calls. Um, and then you guys can see me do it in practice because I think that's a lot better than, than learning. Um, but to be honest, I don't like sales call scripts. Um, I think they don't work. I think it's much better for me to give you a structure for a sales call yeah. versus words. Because when you give someone a script, I just think that they sound like a robot and it removes the ability to be frictionless. And remember, this is not a, you're not trying to sell to a computer. It's a human, right? And so I deviate. Sometimes... My, I can also, you have to start, the main thing I can tell you with sales, right? there's actually three things. Like if I can give you three secrets that will change everything to do with sales, 
the first thing is understand who you are talking to, right? Like if you're talking to a young guy who knows a lot about Facebook ads, you have to be very, very logical and you have to talk about his financial goals because that's what most young guys want and they want the fame and the finances and everything that comes with it, right? And you have to wow him with knowledge. If you're speaking to someone a lot older um, and a little bit less knowledgeable, well, then you cannot talk about finances that much because, um, well, unless they have a situation where they need money, but usually if they're older, they're not really trying to look for money. They're trying to look to free up their time, right? They want to spend time with their children, their grandkids or whatever. And because they're not very tech savvy, you can't be going about, oh, we use this tool for this and we use that and we have this reporting because then you, you, you confuse them. So you need to know who you're speaking to and speak to them, okay? That's the first thing. Second thing, figure out where they are, figure out where they want to be, show them how you can get there and then repeat it back to them, right? Do a lot of repeating, okay? The more you can say what they said back to you, the, the better, okay? And then the final thing is make an offer that they cannot refuse. And when you present the offer, don't be like, so like, if you ask me how much do I charge, don't be like, oh, we charge 2000 a month plus 10% performance fee and that's it. Don't do that because it's not going to work. What you do is repeat back to them. You're like, well, let's say that in the sales call, I told you that um, I have a new grandchild coming and um, I want to spend more time with her. And basically what I say is, well, to be honest, I could charge you $50,000 because I can't put a price on how much time with your grandchild is worth and really remember that that's what we're talking about. But I'm not going to charge you $50,000. I'm just going to charge you $2,000 a month and um, if we hit certain numbers, right, because if we hit those numbers, you'll be an amazing grandmother to her. Then what we're going to do is take a 5% uh, conversion fee and I can show you how that's going to work. So can you see how I took the same offer, but I made it made for them, even though it's the same thing, the conversion will skyrocket. So you've got to understand that. But how long did it take you to be like that confident in sales calls? Dude. I don't even know how many sales calls I've had. Um, yeah. To be honest, I think what has made me better at taking sales calls is not sales calls. <laughs> It's actually getting on client calls where the client is unhappy. So like if you're not getting results or someone on the team made a mess up, they like published an ad with the wrong page or something and you have to explain that to clients. You have to kind of like explain your way out of a problem. I honestly yeah. think that is what has made me so good at sales because if you can sell your way out of like a situation where you completely stuffed up and it's very obvious that it was your fault, you just get good at it. Um, and so I've taken, I probably take like 20 client calls a week, sales calls. I also probably take about 20. I spend a lot of time in calls. So it's just yeah. with practice, um, but it does get better the more you do it. Um, and also the other thing to be honest, and I don't think that's going to help you, but um, it might help you a couple months from now. When there's no pressure, it's easier to sell. So my version, and also everyone's version of, of selling is different. I think what you've probably seen, my version of selling is I'm very aggressive. Yeah. Right? Like I'm loud, I'm to the point, um, I'm full of energy, like I want to go. Like last night I was on the sales call and they wanted to speak to another agency and whatever. And I was like, listen, I have one deal with you that I'm going to make is let's get started now. Let's get you onboarded because I want to get on your results. And um, if you interview other agencies and they beat us, I will not only refund you, I'll give you $200 extra, as long as you can just explain to me why you chose that agency, purely because I want to be the best performance agency in the world. And I guarantee you, I'll give you that $200, but in two months time, you come back to us, I'll be so much better than them because I want to be the best. Like that's a very aggressive form of selling, right? Like I'm very energetic and aggressive. And that works for me because it's me, but other people like to sell with logic or they like to... You know, I'm also a talker. I like talking. Yes. So you, you got to find like what works for you. Don't just try and emulate me, Like take parts of what I'm saying, but don't try and be me. That's the worst way to try and sell. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, one other thing is, could you maybe have a quick look into the uh, ads account of, yeah, um, of, yeah, my client. Thank you.